Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time to continue our Let's Make a Game series. In the previous episode we established a new approach to our game concept and today it's finally time to dive a little bit more into the coding part. To begin with, I want to introduce you to all the objects, sprites and scripts that I prepared for today's episode. First and foremost, I exchanged the sprites of the menu buttons. They actually now look a little bit cleaner, but you know, it's still not the final result. It's just to have something nicer to look at. What I've also done is I added a sprite called star previews and this is basically gonna be popping up once we hover over a star and in here we can display some information but for now it doesn't serve uh, really a purpose. Then uh, the most important thing is I exchanged the sprites for the stars. Now we only have actually 10 sprites. So these are all of our currently different stars. And also the images are a little bit nicer, but of course not the final thing. The way I've done this is actually really interesting. What you can do is actually create a file from a strip. Let's do that. And you can see here is my graphic that I used for the stars. So we have five stars in the upper row and five stars in the lower row. And I just made sure that these all are in a 32 by 32 grid layout. So once this graphic is made, I can simply load it in from a strip and you can see this window popping up. What we have to do is define the number of images, which in this case are uh, 10 of course and then 5 per row and the images are 32 by 32 and you can see the outline is now perfect and once I hit the OK button these images are going to be loaded in into separate sprites. So that is a really nifty thing you can do with GameMaker. Anyways, this is all that is new in the sprite section. Let's have a look at the backgrounds. We still have our frame that is in the actual game room, but I also added a little galaxy sprite or image that I found on the internet just to make it look a little bit nicer. Again, of course, we're not going to use this graphic because it's not really mine. Great, then in the script section I also added a bunch of scripts. For instance we still have the global script but now we also have the script checks which goes on the step event of the core. There's nothing in there just yet but we're gonna basically check for user input such as hitting the escape key in order to bring up the main menu. Then we still have the script main menu buttons. I renamed it slightly, but it's still the same script we made in the previous episode. Then I have an unused script right here that I'm not gonna show off today. But in the celestial bodies, I have two scripts that I redid completely. So first and foremost, we have the script star arrays. And this is the new thing someone mentioned in the comment section that I totally didn't know. Well, I knew it existed, but I wasn't really getting myself into. But making the stars with an array is actually the best thing we can do in this case. Now this script doesn't go on any event. We are actually going to leave the script totally unrelated to any object. However, in one of the scripts we are going to call the script so you can actually execute scripts from other scripts. That is also something new that we're gonna learn today. And then last but not least we have the star script which I believe goes actually somewhere. Yeah, let me think. It might go on our star objects. Yeah, look at that. In the mouse enter, mouse leave and in the draw event we have the script and of course it's going to be applied to the parent object of all of our currently existing stars. Okay and that is basically all that I did in between the episodes. I also want to reload the menu dynamically so that means within the startup room currently we have nothing in there. Previously I had the menu just pasted in but we're going to do that using code. Oh yeah, one more thing that I forgot to mention is that I renamed the stars. Uh, let me actually find the stars right here. You can see, for instance, star 0 is not called 0, 0 anymore, but just 0 and 1. So I just deleted the zeros in front of all the single digit numbers. 
This should make it easier for us to address them in the future. Okay, so one thing I want to do first of all is have a look into the global variables because right here, all of that shebang, we are actually gonna generate with a simple array and of course this will save us all the freaking typing of that thing. So this section right here we did in the previous episode, we can get rid of completely. And we're gonna do something else instead. The first thing I want to add is a randomize functionality. So we're just gonna do randomize and close this off. Now, right here, I want to add a new section, which is celestial bodies. And in here, I want to add two global variables. First of all, the global dot stars amount, which is gonna equal to 51. And also the global star sprite amount, which is gonna equal to 10. If you remember, we had 10 sprites for our stars. Now, within the global variables, we are actually also gonna spawn in the menu initially. And, hmm, thinking about it, we still could do this manually, just paste it into the room. But let's do it dynamically for now, just, you know, in case we're gonna need it. So, game menu. Right here we want, of course, to create instances. Uh, the first one is going to be 2 times global dot tile size, 2 times global dot uh, tile size, and the object new game, of course. That's the first button we want to add. Then uh, the next one is going to be also 2 times global tile size, but 4 times for the next row. Object continue. Then we have instance create 2 times global dot tile size, 6, etc, etc. Object, uh, what was it? Exit was the last button. There we go. Now we have spawned in the game menu and these two variables are available to us. So let's close this off. Okay, I just see that I made a few mistakes here. There we go. Now it should work. Anyways, this means the functionality of the previous episode is established again. We have our menu right here and I can click new game in order to get into the room with the actual galaxy. Okay, great. Let's also add the functionality of being able to actually pop up the menu right here. So we have to get into the script checks. This is on the step event of the core. So what we want to happen in this script is basically everything the user inputs is going to be processed right here. We are going to start with the game menu, as I said. So if the keyboard jack pressed, I would say, VK escape is going to pop up the menu. So if that is the case, we want to toggle the visibility of the menu. But we only want to do that if we are in the game room and not in the startup room. So I'm going to add a second condition. The second condition is if the room equals to room game, yeah, that's it. We just want to check if we are in the game room. So if both of these conditions are true, then with the object new game, we want to destroy it. I actually tried this with visibility and activate deactivate. For some reason, it didn't work. So we're just going to destroy the game menu completely. So we have to do this with all of the objects. Also the continue, we want to instance destroy. There we go. And I'm just going to have this on one line in order to make it a little bit nicer to look at. Make the code clean from the start. Exit is the last button. So instance destroy. There we go. Now I just see, I need another condition. Hmm. Yeah, of course, we first want to check is the game menu already visible or not? Is it already there? So if instance exists object new game, we just have to test it with one of the buttons. So if that is the case, only then we want to destroy the menu because it is already there. And if that is not the case, then we want to do the opposite which means instance create and it's basically the same thing we did in the global variables. So we can just copy this over, I guess. And this is why I'm thinking that we don't actually need it dynamically spawned in in the first room. But alas, it's there for the time being. So that's all right with me. Let's test it out. So here we are in the startup room. If I hit the escape button, nothing happens. However, if we go into the new game room, I hit the escape button, then the menu pops up. And you can also see there's a nice little hovering over effect. It's a much nicer to look at than previously. Hitting the escape button yet again will destroy these instances again. So that worked out. 
good. That's all we had to do for the time being. The next thing I want to do is have a look into our buttons script because right here we have to add something to the new game function. So as soon as we hit the new game button, then we don't only want to set new game to true and go to the room game. We also want to execute the script star arrays. Because if we start up a new game, we want to initialize the stars and randomly spread them across the screen, etc, etc. You know, give them random properties, random sprites. And we want to do that within the star arrays script, which is nowhere. But we are gonna call it from the script as soon as we hit the new game button. Great, so let's check out what happens within the star arrays script. Let's give this a proper title as per usual. What do we want to do first? Good question. Maybe let's plan it out a little bit. The first thing we want to do is initialize all of the star IDs. Because we are going to deal with so many stars, we're actually dealing with IDs rather than names. This is going to make it a lot easier for us and we have to initialize it and know which object has which ID. Next up, we want to create a bunch of arrays. If you don't know what an array is, it is basically a similarly named variable containing similar values in large quantities. So I could, for instance, have a name and it could be linked to zero and this name could be whatever, John, I think they had in the example. Then we could have a second name, etc, etc. That could be Melinda. There we go. And if I want to address a specific variable within this array, I can always do so using this variable instead. So that's going to be really, really practical for us. Anyways, this is more the general stuff. Now let's add a new title called new game. So this is what is going to happen as soon as we hit the new game button. This is uh, the, the most, you know, initializing all of the star positions, etc, etc. Then we should also have an option called load game. So in case the player wants to continue the previously saved game, he can do so pressing the continue button. And I guess that's going to be all for the time being. So let's initialize the star IDs. Of course, we're going to use for loops as much as possible because we have so many stars. We have 51 stars. So let's start with our first for loop. Instead of I, I'm going to use O, uh, which stands for object. So O is going to start from zero and as long as O is smaller than global.stars amount, we want to execute the function and then add uh, something to O or just one to O. There we go. Now let's create our first array, the star object array. And we want to do this dynamically. So instead of a number, I'm just going to add O into the brackets. And we want to set this equal to asset get index, which is a function that gives me the ID of an object. And we also want to uh, load in the name of the object dynamically. So uh, from now on, we will be able to associate the object name with the ID because we get the ID from the object name. That means I could, for instance, go object star zero and then it would get the ID from this string and therefore from our star. However, it's not always going to be zero. Therefore, we are going to cut it off right here and add a plus string, which is a function that converts anything into a string. And we want to convert the O number into a string. So at the beginning, it is zero. So the star object array of zero is going to be associated with the object star zero ID. That is such a great function, such a great function, I have to say. So with that, we initialized a new star object array variable. And I think it might be wise to initialize those guys first. I kind of want to make them global if possible. I'm not sure if that's possible. So we're going to have our arrays right here. This is just uh, defining global variables. We're going to have the, um, you know, the variable we started with star object array. And we don't want to add anything to it just yet. Right here we are making it a array variable. 
So this is the object ID. Then we want to have global var. Um, let's see, we need an X position, right? We want to know the X position of a star. Then we also, of course, need the Y position. There we go. And we are also going to need the sprite. We want to save which sprite it took. So star sprite array is basically the image index. And last but not least, we want to give the star a name. So star name array. Beautiful. So this is just initializing all of the uh, settings or all of the global variables and the arrays that we need. With that, we initialize the IDs and we can call any ID from any star from now on. So that means we can move on to the new game functionality. Let's do this. That means only if uh, global.newGame equals true. If that equals true, then we want to save a few things. For instance, save new position into variables. We want to save new sprites into variables and we want to save... Um, hmm, thinking about it, this might actually be all we need for the time being. Let's start with the position. The position is going to be a random spot somewhere on the screen, right? So let's take our variable star x array and oh no, we have to go with a for loop first, of course. So um, let's start a new for loop right here for s standing for stars equals zero as long as s is smaller than global dot stars amount so smaller than 51 then we want to add to the s and do all of that stuff so save new position save new sprites should all be in the for loop there we go. So now we can start with our star x array and of course we want to use the dynamic version. So we are going to set the s into that bracket and let's go with a margin of about 100 or so. And we're going to go random room with uh, minus 200 I guess. So it's going to leave 100 pixels free and also 100 on the right and left side. We're going to do the same thing with the y array of s equals 100 plus random room height minus 200. There we go. And now we're going to create an instance. And of course, the instance is going to be created dynamically. We have a random position that we saved in the star x array and star y array of s. And also the object is going to be randomly spawned in. We already defined the object and we can simply now spawn it in using our object array and we're going to use also the s variable. And with that we are going to spawn in all of our stars dynamically without having to type them all out. Isn't that amazing? I just love arrays. Anyways, that's all for the new position and we have saved them all into variables. That means we can also make a safe game and actually load it up again. Anyways, let's go ahead and do the sprite. For that, we're going to set the star sprite array of S and we want to set it equal to floor random global dot star sprite amount. So it's going to be something between zero and nine, which equals to 10 images. Then we actually want to save this in a new temp global variable because we're going to need to have this in another script. So maybe let's do global temp sprite is going to equal star sprite array of s. There we go. So within the sprite array for each planet, we basically saved the index it's going to use. And then we saved it in a global temp variable that we can access from anywhere during this for loop. So that means we want to basically assign the variables, right? So let's also call it assign new variables. Right here, we can simply say with the star object array of S, we want to do something. We can simply cycle through all of these arrays and do everything all at once. It's so practical arrays. Thank you so much for making me aware of those. So the first variable that we're gonna save is the sprite, right? So this code within the with statement is only gonna happen on the object we are addressing right here. That means I can set, for instance, the image speed to be equal to zero, and I can set the image index to be equal to global.temp sprite. 
And with that, we have set the random sprite. However, I also want to check for collisions. And this is going to be very important because, of course, some stars are going to overlap. And I don't want that. So, uh, we're also going to do this with a for loop within the with statement. So, for i equals uh, zero, then as long as i is smaller than global stars amount, we want to plus plus i. And within that for loop, we want to check if an instance is already placed there on the x, y position, and if the instance is any of these objects, of the star object object array. So it's going to check for all of the objects and whether or not they are colliding. Simply within one for loop. Isn't that just amazingly great? And I think I forgot a bracket right here. So if that is the case, then we want the instance to be destroyed. And we also want to set the global stars amount to be minus equal to one, of course, because we have killed a star. Great, okay, after all of this has happened, we want to set the global new game to false again. I think we have to do this right here. This will probably make sense. New game equals false, right? Yeah, we initialized all of the stuff that we currently want to do. Of course, this is going to be uh, expanded upon once we have new stuff to load in. But for now, this is going to do the trick. Now, I actually want to add something else to the mix right here. So I'm going to add a little section called debug info, just so that we know what's going on. And we want to show a pop-up message. The message is going to be total amount of stars is going to equal to plus string global dot stars amount. So I want to know how many stars have been deleted. Also, I want to show a separate message with the random seed actually. So random get seed. There we go. Just so that we know which seed we are on. Great. Now let's already think the load game functionality through. For instance, we're going to need the if global dot new game equals false, then we want to load the old positions of the stars. We want to load the old sprite of the star and we want to assign the uh, old variables, I guess. And the variables for now are going to be uh, sprites, I guess, only. Great, so we already have a better idea of what we want to go for. Also, within this script, I want to give the stars their dedicated names. And I asked you to actually give me a bunch of names, and so you did. It's still not enough. I still need more names. However, we're gonna load them in right now. And this is gonna be the star name array. The star name array of zero is gonna be Sol. And of course, we cannot do this dynamically because uh, uh, the names are not dynamic and therefore I will have to write this all out for all of the stars. Luckily, I prepared myself and we can now load in all of the names that I currently have. So let me quickly do that. There we go. So you can see these are all of your guys' suggestions. And I did it for all the star names up to 30. And here you can see everything else is still unnamed. So I need still a couple of names. Okay, so now that we have initialized all of the names, we of course also want to assign the star names. So let's do that with another for loop. We can use n as a variable for names. So if n uh, or n starts at zero, if n is smaller than global dot stars amount and also n plus plus, there we go. If that is the case, we want to save the global.temp name, which is a new variable that I'm setting right here. And of course, we want to take this out of the array. So all of the names are going to be cycled through with this for loop. And then with the uh, star object array of n, we want to do something on that. We want to give it a variable, which is self star name equals global.temp name. So on the stars themselves, they will give themselves this self variable and therefore have a dedicated name. Great. So I think with that out of the way, we've done everything that I wanted to do in the script for today. Let's close it off. But before this functions, we have to do something within the script stars. If you forgot, this is actually on our parent star object on the mouse enter, mouse leave and draw event. 
So, stars. What do we do with that script? We first of all want to draw the stars and the names, actually, that we set for them. For that, we have to draw self, of course. First, we want to uh, write the names in, in white, I guess. So, draw set color Z white. And we want to draw a text uh, which is transformed because otherwise it's a little bit big. We want to write those names on the x, y positions of the stars and we want to set them to self star name, the variable we loaded into the object itself. And we want to scale this by half. So it's only half the size and what is this? Angle is probably gonna be zero. We don't want any angles. Next up, we want to have a mouse enter, mouse leave thingy majingy right here. So let's add a switch event number. Yeah, something like that. And we want to set the mouse enter first. So case event mouse enter. We want a pop up to happen, right? So instance create x y object star preview and of course that is our little blank slate that we have right here in the sprites the star sprite preview which is basically just a see-through thingy-majingy that isn't coded just yet it's just popping up and that will show us some basic information about the star system we are hovering our mouse over so after this has happened we want to set a break and set the functionality for mouse leaf there we go. So case event mouse leave. Then we want what to happen. Uh, delete pop up, I guess. So with object star preview, we want to simply instance destroy. There we go. Something like this. And then, of course, we need one last break in order to make sure nothing goes wrong and there's an H missing. There we go. Now, I believe we have done everything, right? Everything should work. So let's test it out. Start up the game and see how many errors we have. Okay, so far so good. Let's hit the new game button and the first thing you can see is the show message. You can see we gone down from 51 to 48 stars. So there were a few collisions. The next thing we should see is the seat right here. I've also shown that as a message. And now we're gonna continue to the next room. And you can actually see that all of these stars have been evenly distributed. And you can also see that their name is being displayed on top of them, which is kind of great. It's look at that. There is Sol. Also, if I hover over them, you can see the information window, the preview that we loaded in just before. Wow, look at that. Amazing. I love it. <laughs> I just love making games. So, again, keep more suggestions coming, I need at least 20 or so more names. But with that out of the way, I would say we're gonna wrap it right up. Let's actually check out a new seat. Oh, look at that. A lot of stars have been deleted, have been colliding with each other. This is the seat, but... Oh, ah, look at... What? What? Ah, of course. If I hit the new game button from this room, then it never reset the amount of the stars. So already found a bug that we can fix. So let's do that actually right away to wrap it up. So if we hit the new game button, then we want the global dot stars amount to be equal to 51 again. There we go, fixed. I will also have to remember to actually change this number as soon as we change it within the global variable. So I'm gonna make myself a little note here. Also in the buttons script. Great, okay. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye-bye.